This last chapter was something else. It's all I gotta say right now. So instead of beating around the bush, I'm just gonna say it. This is how right, right now. This chapter was a lot of bullshit. It was ass pull after ass pull after ass pull after fucking ass pull. So last week, Eileen was gonna bring down a meteor that was supposed to destroy everything and Urza being Urza, even though she had broken bones because she got hit by Eileen in her dragon form, went up with one arm and was going to head towards Comet and I was hoping that I would eat my words this chapter, but that's not gonna be the case because we're hoping that Urza, I, Urza wouldn't destroy the asteroid, but she did. She obliterated that thing, and that was just mind-numbingly painful to see. And honestly, I was hoping that would be the only thing in this chapter that I would be hating, because Eileen in dragon form, after Urza pretty much took out a comet using last of her strength, maybe Eileen could have done some serious shit and gone on a crazy-ass rampage, something else could have went in a different direction. But did it? No! Because when Urza started flying back towards the Earth, Wendy, out of nowhere, out of fucking nowhere, wakes up and says, Don't worry, I'm enchanting dragon slaying magic into your fucking sword. Where the hell did that come out from? Where, when did she learn that? I mean, it was just a freaking Wendy Deus Ex Machina just for Urza to win the fight and... Holy shit. If she could just enchant dragon slaying magic into a sword... Being a dragon slayer herself and every other dragon slayer having problems fighting fucking dragons, how is dragon slaying magic put into an, another source into a fucking sword? Being that able to slice through a fucking 400 year old dragon that's been wrecking shit since the beginning of dragon slaying magic ever began. And just that one gigantic, I mean, yeah, it was a gigantic slash throughout pretty much the entirety of Irene's dragon slaying body. But that still pretty much brought her down and dragged her back into a human form because of the damage it inflicted. And that was just, oh my fucking god, man. And on top of that, Eileen just still losing her fucking mind, stabs Urza straight through the chest. Straight through the fucking chest, but somehow Urza still manages with bones shattered on her body to land another headbutt onto Eileen. And Eileen is just continuously fucking up the insane awesome villain that she had become just being a fucking moron and the last ass pull of this fucking chapter was Eileen yeah she came to a realization everything I'll talk about that in a little bit but I don't know where she's like okay I can't do this anymore stabs herself to kill herself that was the last ass pull hero mosh four fucking ass pulls I haven't seen something this shitty and I don't know how long if ever even in, even in fairy tale I haven't seen something this shitty of a chapter and Fucking, oh my god. I really have nothing really to say about this chapter. In fact, this would be, I didn't think I'd be doing this earlier at all, but this chapter is as fucking zero. It's a fucking zero right now, is what I would have said if it weren't for Eileen's revelation. Now, like I said, let's talk about that right now. Because Eileen, while she was fighting Urza, and Urza pretty much is doing her thing. I don't know where it starts laughing, you know, because the whole fairy tale thing she's fighting for. And as long as she has that, she can still remain happy. That I, the laughter for that kind of woke up Eileen a little bit. Now, Eileen, we can we find out that these two weren't actually incompatible with each other when Eileen tried to take over Urza's body to become human once again. That wasn't the case because we see another flashback to Eileen's actual true past, which was she couldn't do it. She couldn't take over her own child's body, and you know, as mad as she was going to be, as mad as she was becoming, losing her fucking mind, she still couldn't, because of her baby's laughter. Now, I know that makes seem like a cop out, but if you think about it, when you carry someone and try to protect something for over 400 years, even though you're losing your fucking mind, you're still gonna have loving and caring affections for her mother and child. That is no exception. So we see Eileen start to brain up because she can't do that to her own child. She pretty much had to give her up. So even though she was becoming mad, she didn't want to be driven to the point where she would just take over her child and ruin her own child's life, even though she was protecting it for over 400 years. Which led her to abandoning, or rather letting the village that she dropped off Urza, let them take care of her, even though it kind of wasn't really the best choice since she got taken into the Tower of Heaven, but that's, that's way back when. But with seeing Eileen have an actual human side to her, actually caring about the child we thought she had no feelings for and it kind of brings back the question of why she was so 
interested in Urza at first, even though she wanted to say, I'm going to kill you and I, there's no need for you. That pretty much explains why she was so excited and had a bit of a, a happy face, you know, when she heard that, that find, find out that Urza was alive. Now when you read a chapter casually, you're just thinking you bypass all most bullshit parts, but this one was just kind of, it, it wasn't just kind of, it was obvious a lot of bullshit was happening. And even casually reading, I couldn't really enjoy this chapter for what it was. And like I said, it would have been a zero if it weren't for Eileen's actual realization of, you know, she's still a mother. She still cares for her child. But even that, honestly, this chapter, I'll give it a three. Even though I originally said it was going to be zero, it's going to be a three out of ten, this chapter. It was rage-inducing, bullshit after bullshit, ass pull after ass pull. And these things are a reason why Fairy Tale gets a lot of slack because of this kind of writing. And it makes you wonder what the editorial department at Shonen, Shonen Magazine, where the, the original publication of Fairy Tale is, who is Hiro Mashima's editor? Who is proofreading this shit? And Hiro Mashima, do you really think, I know you're not going to see this, he's not going to see this, but do you really think pulling this kind of ass pulls continuously is going to get you where, get you, not just you, get Fairy Tale? up into the higher rankings as a great anime and manga. No, it will not. This kind of stuff is why people generally hate on fairy tale, why people just shit on it, and people are pretty much just not giving a flying rat's ass about it. Because of this, I, fairy tale could have been something great, it could have gone in many great directions, the lore, the world, the characters, everything. It could have been something fan fucking tastic if it weren't for these sort of ass pulls and deus ex machinas and just fucking friendship powers overtaking and undersaturating or over undersaturating. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to talk about? If it weren't for these kind of things, fairy tale could have risen into something truly amazing. That goes back to what I was saying last week. That fairy tale is full of lost potential. So, so much lost potential. But that's the way Hiromashi wants to do it. I don't know if he's ever going to see the backlash or anything of this, but stuff like this is going to make you wonder is... Oh, well, I know I'm still going to say it. I know a lot of you are still going to say it, but it makes people wonder, is seeing the next Fairy Tale movie or even buying the Blu-rays to any of this worth it in the end if this is the kind of stuff we're going to get? Is this the final product of what we're going to be getting? The end-all, be-all? Is Fairy Tale just going to be deus ex machinas and ass pulls? If because if it is, then people are just going to be driven away from it. I've already seen a lot of comments saying, okay, I'm dropping this now. If, it, if this shit happens again, I'm dropping this manga. People are going to be like, well, they're not really going to drop it. They're just going to say they're not reading it anymore. But we know you're going to read it. We know you're going to read it. But, like I said, are people still going to be interested as they were? There still are going to be people that are going to pretty much just drop the series regardless. And with the movie coming out, I'm, I want to talk about that later, but the movie coming out, it's going to be pretty much drive off a lot of people from seeing it because they're going to wonder is it even worth it the last movie the first movie how it ended was pretty great it was and on a sad note it wasn't exactly all peaches and butterflies and everything and friendship power well on the day there were still sacrifices that had to be made which made the freaking ending of the movie pretty damn good in my opinion so if it does again with the second movie then there's still hope but like I said with these kind of ass pulls and everything going on Hope for another anime, unless Hiromashima is funding and doing everything himself with the whole next installment, hopefully. Honestly, I still hope that there is going to be another season. But with these kind of ass pulls, with these kind of chapters going on, it's going to hurt the process. Quite drastically. I just want Fairy Tale to be good. I just want Fairy Tale to be good. Because the chapters leading up to this, before these last two, three chapters started, Fairy Tale was on, on a train. It was on a fucking train of greatness. Shit was flowing smoothly, character development was happening, some crazy shit was going on. Then these two chapters happened and just shat all over it like it was completely nothing. Oh, fucking hell. So 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10. Like I said, would have been 0 if weren't for Eileen's little revelation and backstory, which would have been implemented and done a lot better if weren't for this chapter and the way things turned out. But like I said, 3 out of 10 because of that. Oh man, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm I'm really wondering. How do you guys feel about this? Those of you watching this, how do you feel about these last few chapters going on? How do you feel about Fairy Tale at the this particular moment in time? I I really want to know. I want to hear thoughts about this. But anyway, this is Nigeria Sakura. Signing out. Later.